It can be a hard transition, but as it turns out, your children eventually become adults. And even when they're still in high school sometimes. So here to help you accept and understand this rite of passage is Ken Dolan Del Vecchio, author of Civil Habits of Exceptional but Not Perfect Parents. Hi Ken, how you doing? Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I'm <laughs> glad to have you. This is a topic I deal with every day, and I'm so <laughs> glad we're talking about it. So, yeah, it's 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 challenging because we we parents think of our kids as often as little. We remember them always that way. They're in our hearts as, as our little kids. And yet, when they become adults, we have to let go of that. We have to, in a sense, grieve their childhood. And we also have to let go of any feelings about wanting to control them, any feelings that maybe we even have a sense of competition with them, as many parents do. And maybe we even envy their growing accomplishments. That's a very interesting topic that I want to touch on more. So are you saying whether or not they're in the same field or just in general once they're past where you were at that age? I think that that's it. When they're beginning to show achievements and maybe you feel a little threatened by that. And I'll give you an example that happened many years ago when I was about 23 or so. And I've seen this in clinical sessions a number of times since. I was with somebody who meant a lot to me and she had just gotten a great job. She was going to be a systems analyst in a workplace where they were translating a lot of the business process into computer programs. And she came and met with her. It was hard to get this job, many interviews. She came and she was with her parents and I was there and she told them about it. And her parents started saying things like, wow, how'd you learn to do that? Can you really do that? Are you going to be able to pull this off? <laughs> and I have to say, it was like watching her as a balloon that was inflated, just been pricked. And she just, she just got smaller before my eyes. And really, all I had to do was say, wow, that's wonderful, validate her achievement. And that didn't happen. And, and that doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, you know, it's hard to accept because a lot of times, parents are just so scared. You know, they, they love you just so much and they want you to grow that even though sometimes all the kid wants is just someone to support them in this mean world, someone to support them, the parent just wants to give them their opinion instead. Right, and, and that's really what I mean, to let go of that illusion of control. Because you absolutely don't have control of a young adult who's out in the world creating their, their livelihood forging relationships, deciding what they're going to do when it comes to exercising their spirituality. And their choices may be things that I don't necessarily agree with or I think may be sabotaging for them, but the goal is to just listen, validate. If you're asked, mom or dad, what do you think about this? Then it makes sense to give your opinion and leave it there, but to insert your opinion almost always is going to feel bad to the to your adult child on the receiving end. As a, a family therapist and a parent, what do you think the the ages of okay, my kid's an adult, they well, can handle themselves to some degree? Well, it, it's a transition. It's a transition. But as soon as they are out in the world, so they can drive, 16, 17, they're working and they are having to make a great deal of their own decisions. But by the tw time that they're 21, 22, 23, mm -hmm. their life is their own. And, and if you do the kinds of things that show them that you don't have confidence, you're not sure that they can manage their own lives, you're going to you're gonna affect, affect their confidence. You're going to affect their self-esteem. And you're also going to probably convince them that they shouldn't tell you some of the things that they'd probably like to tell you and me maybe even that they don't want to visit with you as much. They might decide that they're going to put more distance between you and them. And most parents don't want that. I liked one point I had read in your notes before that goes along with that is also asking your kids for their opinion sometimes, make them feel legitimized. Absolutely. So it's no, there's no better way to say, I value your thoughts and your suggestions 
And when you do that and you take them in, and this happens in my conversations with my son. My son's a professional writer. And I'll ask him questions that are about his profession because I write as well. And he always has great things to say. He has also lots of political opinions. And so I'll ask him about those opinions. And they may or may not be in line with mine, but they're valid. And that's important. The key thing that you want to keep in mind is you want ultimately your child to be a friend. You want them to be in an adult-to-adult -adult relationship with you. We're never, we're never going to see them as a friend in exactly the same way as we see our peers. We're not going to tell them many things about our private lives, but we're going to relate to them in a way that always affirms their competence and never intrudes in ways that feel like we're overstepping. Exactly. You got to aim for the friendship and it's obviously not going to look like an actual adult school friendship but it will merge itself into the right connection that you need. Ken, fortunately we're out of time. Thanks Great for talking to you, Danny.